The 48-year-old Lukar Jam Atsuk picks up his sons from kindergarten. He takes the older boy's hand in one hand and the younger boy's school bag in the other. It's hard to imagine that he is a political fanatic and has run for the leadership of the Central Tibet Administration. Lukar Jam is from Amdu of Tibet and enjoys a comfortable life in Dharamsala that most exiled Tibetans do not know. But since the birth of his second son, he is considering leaving Dharamsala. Nipala <laughs> Saring Yong Zam has been in India for 20 years. He lives alone in Dharamsala now. She has three younger brothers. One of them went to America three years ago. Tibetan exiles immigrating to Western countries through marriage isn't a rare case. For example, between January and November of 2004, the District Court of Dharamsala alone had 40 Tibetan men registering with Western spouses. The following six months, they averaged up to two Tibetan men marrying a Western woman every week. <laughs>
but not all cross-cultural marriages can bring about a change in citizenship. Perhaps it was fate. Second generation exiled Tibetan, Dorji Se Wang, studied at the Japan home of the Tibetan children's village when he was young. It was very strict, and he left school for good after an impulsive decision to run away from home. After many years, he went to Nepal and became a guide. At that time, he did not understand how important identity and documents are. Dorji Se Wang did not have any documents, but it was as if he had a guardian angel helping him. He was able to receive his documents in a month, when it usually takes other Tibetans more than a year. However, the good fortune of Dorji Se Wang did not follow him to Japan. After several attempts, he ultimately failed to obtain Japanese citizenship. He failed to be a Japanese citizen, but only for one, just one simple reason that he could have avoided. There was a, uh, there was a part where you have to write, you know, which citizenship are you now currently? He wrote Tibetan. But the, uh, the, author the Japanese authorities said, you know, Tibet is not a country. It is part of China. So you're basically, you're a Chinese, aren't you? It's a city office in Niigata. That's one of the oldest places you can find in the 1980s. Nobody knew the situation about the Tibetan people in exile. So, but they know that it's part of China. He, he's born in India as an exile, so it's impossible for him to get a Chinese nationality. He also mentioned, they asked him uh, whether he was a refugee. Uh, where is any documents or any status that you that can prove to us that you are a refugee from Tibet? India is not a ratified state country for the Refugee Convention of the United Nations. The word refugee doesn't apply in India. So you know, there's, there's, there's many things that that really made this go very wrong. Some part, I feel it's Dorji not explaining and just getting angry and just really blew the whole thing up. I called his wife. He said whatever happened to them, between them, is over 20 years. And, uh, and she doesn't want to get involved. She doesn't want to see him. And one more thing. Uh, she said, please tell Dorji that the mother has died. He had a difficult life in Japan, but uh, it's only the mother. He said the mother was very nice to him. His son is now fully grown, but he quit baseball. So Dorji was really bragging about his son playing in a, a good baseball team. Oh, he's not anymore. 
Ciò che è stuorra. Da niente, corane, da milizi che valenze, corane, rangutende, sono paraggi, sono di guarda. Da arancio, poi di sale, di gimigi, tu, guarda, coraggi, tu, tu, coraggi, le avrai tolla, bisi, e si vede, di tolla, ma di stop, ci dico, Georgie Sewang lives in the new Aruna area in Delhi, a place known as Tibetan Village. The village is bustling with shops, restaurants, and hotels. At the entrance is a sign written in English that reads, Tibetan Refugee Colony. There are currently about 3,000 exiled Tibetans living here. <laughs> Chiege, Gopsere, Mongol, Kanjumjo, Dina Langi, Tonga, Gortuce. Mixe Kondu, Gopsere, England, Arigi, Pemele, Jimangachi, Tana Dere, Keguru, Tam Tam Keguru, Chin, Tam Lever, Tapani, Mata, Tam Tam Doji, Gordi, Dito. Tibetan Village is also an important transportation hub for Tibetans in India. People can take the train or bus directly to Dharamsala from here, or they can go to New Delhi to fly to the rest of the world. However, according to Indian government documents, Tibetan village is number 895 pending planning area. It is only a temporary street block. It is like the exiled Tibetans in India, who have been struggling for nearly 60 years in India and still do not know where their future lies. So in some corners of Tibetan village, there are ads that claim to guarantee Indian passports for Tibetans. All persons born in India after 1950, but before 1st July 1987, will be citizens of India. But if you are born after 1st July 1987, then to qualify to be a citizen of India, one of your parents at least must be an Indian citizen. And in 2003, it was legislated that at least one of your parents had to be an Indian citizen and the other was not an illegal migrant. So now the law is much tighter than it used to be. Although India's Citizenship Act had not changed much in the past few decades, the fact never caught the attention of the exiled Tibetans until 2010. In 2010, 25-year-old Namiel Dokar caused an uproar by seeking Indian citizenship and passport. With the help of her lawyer, Dr. Raksna Swami, the Indian Foreign Ministry was brought to court. She eventually became the first exiled Tibetan to legally obtain an Indian passport. <laughs> I was shocked to find that she was not granted the passport. Various excuses were given. The worst of which was that you cannot be a citizen of India if you are Tibetan. Um, so we saw no alternative except to serve a legal notice on the government uh, demanding her uh, rights to a passport. And when it was refused on the ground that she was not a citizen of India, we went to the High Court in a writ petition. The High Court 
court uh, after several hearings passed an order stating that uh, uh, she apply for a passport and it was for the government of India if it saw fit to give her explanation why she was not being granted a passport or grant her the passport and they gave a period of six weeks in which to do this. The government of India did nothing during those six weeks. So after a few months we went in what is called civil contempt petition. Tibetans are not known for applying for a passport. When Tibetans apply for passport, you know, like it's not normal for them, you know. No, how is it this possible? They say, no, no, it's not possible, no. So then you are stuck. So then you have to go to court. In the end, Namiel Dokar and Dr. Swami spent two years to satisfy the Indian government's citizenship review. In 2010, the Supreme Court of India ruled to give Namiel Dokar Indian citizenship and an Indian passport. Delhi ki chhedo timche khayo ra Delhi High Court ne timta che che ani morando chasha na ani gyaala kichu gyeb duungi tao chupe se chik nyo la ke sa shas nyo la ke sa du ani zadim ki gondeo shi sun moran gyaala misse cha gores gyaala misse cha ge yue zang ani moran la gyaala misse ki top dang danyam te gores ani top dang di nao no chik di passport cha gores che zang kiran zo mor passport te gores di na shi kiran zo ki the Indian media reported this case in a high-profile manner. Namiel Dokar's passport lawsuit quickly ignited heated debates among exiled Tibetans. Samsu the the Sanganing it a good to Nayua, any Dela, Yabgo number chair, Yapuri, Pumulo Chunjiji, Kunguchung, any Timgishi Sung, the dead droche, any Kana Timch Tobere, Gates to Tobere, Chesan Bea, Hurri, Kunguchung Lange, Oats Chung, Ding Yambo, Tachik to Gawaching and Manguchung. the government policies are there, but people like us, if we, instead of motivating people or encouraging our cause, get ourselves enrolled as an Indian citizenship, it will not only demoralize the whole point, whole whole fight that His Holiness and the Central Tibetan Administration has been struggling. So it'll be like some kind of demoralizing the whole issue. Manguji, I see ki R C K J. Paja shayaj ke yo mar changu shuna. Tapjo chudo lega ch maching ye kazu mangbu yosh. R C K I C K ne susu mize rang chowa kien denge denge. Susu pogyo rang sam denge kazu mangbu yosh. Chesa nge nge ne kashu gore nge shu guchi. Kya ga mize apply chije nga pepe nyuma chije chaye ki denge chowa chowa nge ne maju nge chesa di mandra chije kunge chaye chedo ani kashu gore. Taking an Indian passport, taking Indian citizenship, means that you are sort of loosening the bonds with Tibet. And it should be so. If you are going to be a citizen of India, then you must be wholeheartedly a citizen of India. You cannot have a divided loyalty. Although the debate continues, other exiled Tibetans have followed suit. Soon after, a Tibetan acquired Indian citizenship and passport through the High Court of Bangalore. According to the latest census data, about 35,000 exiled Tibetans in India are eligible for citizenship under the Citizenship Act, which accounts for about one-third of Tibetans living in India. However, it is a long struggle for every exiled Tibetan who seeks Indian citizenship. I'm Indian citizen by the way. And Delhi High Court has also given this order and there is a precedence. He said, no, there was an individual case. You know, you bring your court case, then maybe uh, uh, you will win and then we will uh, give you a passport. I said, why do we need this? Lob Sang Wangyal was born in India in 1970. 
He is a journalist and freelance writer. He often reported on his own naturalization struggle to various news websites. In 2015, he began to seek legal aid and eventually won his lawsuit in the Delhi High Court. After two years, he attained his Indian citizenship and passport. My case was not an individual case. We filed a public interest litigation. So it covers everybody, those who were born between, uh, Tibetans born between 1950 and 87, and their children included. A few friends, they contributed, uh, uh, you know, like for example, bus tickets or to pay my hotels in Delhi. Uh, they understood what I was doing. Through me, many problems will be solved. I mean, the, this passport, the passport problem for Tibetans will be solved. However, since Lobsang Wangyo won his lawsuit, the Tibetan in exile community has accelerated in its dissonance. Numerous eligible Tibetans in exile started to submit their applications to the Indian authorities, and disputes over an identity crisis began to surface. The CTA issued a order to all the Tibetan settlements stating that any Tibetan trying to get an Indian passport, if they need any supporting letters from the settlement offices, the settlement offices should deny that. Settlement officers shouldn't apply NOC, no objection certificate. CTA uh, President uh, Lobsang Sange or Senge said, uh, mm, uh, you know, if all Tibetans become Indians, then uh, how would we, you know, legitimize the struggle? And my counter argument is, if this is what you see, then how come you got American citizenship? And not just you, there are others uh, in the Tibetan government who have Indian passport, American passport, Canadian passport. Did they not realize this, that this is uh, hurting the struggle? This double standard is something I cannot tolerate. The people who's telling these people, be a Tibetan, they're not even Tibetans anymore. The passport it tells them that they're Americans, they're Canadians, British. There's many Tibetans who envy that, who escape from Tibet after 1987. What are, what's going to happen to them? They cannot obtain an Indian passport. Now, they have less chance than the, uh, the Indian borns. They, they're afraid of losing control over the Tibetans. You remain refugees, and because you remain refugees, you remain poor too, because you don't have a lot of opportunities. And the more poor you are, the more dependent you become on CTA, the more control it has uh, on uh, you. Lobsang Sange tried uh, in, in, in 2011 to have a say uh, in the visa matters to Tibetans. This is basically trying to control you, your movement. <laughs> Gobsore Lechpat Nagar, in the south of New Delhi, is a multi-ethnic, multicultural area. In recent years, some exiled Tibetans have stepped out of resettlements and refugee camps to gather here. Most of them are young people born in India after 1987. According to Indian law, they are unable to become Indian citizens, but they still strive to break away from the shackles of ethnicity and integrate into Indian society. They are dressed in contemporary clothing, and their unique language is a mix of Tibetan, Hindi, and English. Travel agency, and you were the Langara digi office travel office in a digalam, last one Nagala travel office you were. Any Mong by the travel office the Jachimbu Chegi, Miu Doche, Tai Mong by Jachimbu Tanguan is a chicky, Ditoltani, Tachik, Chilo Dego, Junse, Soji, Dichaud. 
Delhi la ni master chita and jela animation la this interest ke ni ni animation this jaun ba animation jaun ni di jela noida la company chila animator fresher chini lega join chhi. Ni ge tha tha da ni ge corporate office software development company chila ma business development manager chini lega chhi ge tunda. Maram intensi inchi ro. Ane anda present di losung juni. Ni dong cuci dia tet kalor tet sikit dua tang ayat dua cie jadi le sikit dua tang. Ani dia le jauh sungi engal lega ras ro. Ani ni dong cungi ni tet handa betul kering li. Tapi ni cie lega cie ni teri tet. Mandi le. Cannot call them just normal Tibetan. I think they have a very high IQ. A lot of Tibetan people may have given an excuse. They said we can't do that. No, it's impossible for us. But we found these people who's, who said, we can do this. We just have to study harder. We just have to work harder. If you really want to break the wall, you know, if you want to go through, you got to really fight for it. เดินเดินตาดีขั้วเลยเอ่อยังตัวเกาะชุ่มโรชเกาะชิโซ่ชิโซ่น่ะเล็กก็ชัวร์อ่ะงั้นส่วนวันที่ตกตัวโรชดี
Tin jambu siapa? Tak sahaja orang ini sebelah lori itu, mungkin orang payu tenggelar. Kamu sendiri nak cengkeri, mungkin orang payu tenggelar. Siapa yang tinggal di sini? Tak, tanda ni kap cilet ni pun dia cinta. สมเนียนะมาเพลจูสเพลจูยิ่งยุ่งงาคันเดชเรศนิเงี้ยจีงาจีเครปาสปอร์ตจีวะอันอันนี้สตรีมส์มาเจอตอนนี้งาเพบ
There are 48 Tibetan veterans who have served in the Indian Army. Most of them are 80 years old and all alone. These men will continue to grow old here with their physical and emotional wounds. Shiva 